struggle was neither an empty political adventure nor a reactionary, bo nor reactionary born of idle resentment. We gather as a nation to commune with our forefathers who were long-suffering innocent victims of imperial plunder and colonial oppression, yet also heroic defenders of our inalienable sovereignty and valiant fighters of our freedom. On Jamuhuri Day, we celebrate the moment when Kenya proclaimed itself a free democratic republic. It is also a time to reflect deeply on the founding aspirations of our nation. And I want to say, while I move along with you, that in the, in the early moments of this administration, we engaged to ensure that the challenges that millions of Kenyans told us in this campaign, we began the journey to address those challenges. One of the biggest and notorious challenge is the challenge of high cost of living. And it is imperative that we have a clear plan. And I want to tell the people of Kenya, this high cost of living, we are tackling it in three phases. Number one, our first agenda when we came into office is to ensure that we encourage farmers to access affordable fertilizer. And that is why we reduce fertilizer from 7,000 shillings to 3,500 so that we can enable our farmers to be able to enhance their productivity in our journey towards making food affordable in our republic. Our second agenda, and I have said this, is that we are going to import 10 million bags of, 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 of different assorted types of food, including maize, so that we can close the gap temporarily because of the harvest that was limited in this year's agricultural season occasioned by climate change and failure of rain. And thirdly, we are now in the process of working with the private sector to ensure that we import 300,000 metric tons of fertilizer for the planting season that is going to come from January going into April. Already, two million bags have arrived in the country and four million bags are on the way. And I want to assure our farmers that we are going to stand with them to make sure that government provides adequate seed and adequate subsidized fertilizer to make sure that our productivity is enhanced so that we can produce enough food and reduce the challenges of the high cost of living in our republic. The second item that we must tackle is the issue of ensuring that we create enough jobs for the millions of young people in our nation. Apart from what we are doing with the tech community, our housing plan, which we have rolled out in earnest, already we have launched the construction of 40,000 units of houses in the last three months. And in the remaining months of this year, we are going to launch the construction of 160,000 additional houses across the Republic in our quest to ensure that we have 200,000 houses built around the country, both social and affordable houses, so that the people of Kenya can not only have access to jobs, we can grow our enterprises, and we can ensure that the 6.5 million Kenyans who today live in informal settlements have become home owners. I want to request and ask all county governments, we already have 15 county governments that are working with us on this plan. I want to ask all the remaining county governments to come on board so that we can move together in the journey to ensuring that we create jobs, we build our enterprises, 
and Kenyans have access to affordable housing. Let me also say on the matter of ensuring that we have adequate food, our fourth item is to ensure that we transit from rain-fed agriculture to agriculture under irrigation. And that is why we are building 100 new mega dams around the country under our new program of private public partnership that will be anchored on water purchase agreements that will be underwritten by the government of Kenya so that we can work with the private sector to produce enough irrigation facilities and also to ensure that we supply and harvest enough water for us to power the engines of our irrigation and transit from the 670,000 land under irrigation to 3 million in the coming years so that we can also produce enough food using irrigation. Let me also say that under our value addition, agro-processing and manufacturing sector, our triple program and intervention that will bring on board the Dongo Kundu Special Economic Zone, all the other economic zones, including the Naivasha Industrial City and our, in, our city in, um, in, in Athi River, we will ensure that going into the future, our industrialization agenda that has been going down, which has gone from 9% to 7%, we have agreed with our private sector that we will re-engineer that space using the products we have from coffee to tea to avocado to leather to cotton and we have agreed that industrialization is going to contribute from our seven percent at the moment we want to move it to 20 percent of our gdp by 2030 because that is the way we are going to add value to our products we are going to create jobs and we are also going to create wealth. Let me also say that mindful of this solemn ob obligation to do right, while laying the foundation of a flourishing nation for future generations, I have pursued several interventions since I took office nearly three months ago with the urgency, zeal, and focus that the moment demands. Since then, we have engaged successfully to reorient policing operations from a heavy and illegitimate reliance on illegal and extrajudicial interventions, which frequently entailed such intolerable violations as abductions, torture, disappearance, and murder. There is now consensus that a new policing paradigm is at hand and it is possible to achieve a high level of security for our citizens and also observe their rights and freedoms to the greatest extent. I commend the entire National Police Service from the constable on the beat to the Inspector General for the enthusiasm with which they have embraced the changes and enhanced our general security through increased vigilance and improve relationship with citizens and their communities. Before the end of the year, I will be appointing a task force to review the terms and service, the terms of service of our Kenya police service. <clears throat> it is instructive to note that the people of Kenya talk to us about predatory lending. And I engaged, when I came into office, three fintech institutions on the way forward in making mobile loans more affordable. As a result, there was a drastic reduction in the interest charged on the police service 
signaling a new era of affordable credit for borrowers. I also engage lenders on the need to liberate more than 4 million borrowers from the prejudice arising from being blacklisted under the Credit Reference Bureau framework, which arbitrarily paralyzes their business prospects. We have secured an agreement with the lenders to abandon this punitive approach and shift to a credit scoring system which incorporates incentives for both lender and borrower. Let me also say that under our program on managing climate change, we will ensure that we build our 15 billion tree cover to be planted around the country. We will build it from the bottom up. The Ministry of Interior has the instructions to start with the 45,000 people at the, at, the, at, the, at the bottom of the provincial administration pyramid, the Nyumba Kumi uh, leaders, 45,000 of them coming to the 9,000 assistant chiefs and 4,000 chiefs to ensure that we build from the bottom going up our tree planting exercise to ensure that we reach the 15 billion trees planted across the country. And I want to thank the governor of Nairobi. We are going to be working with the county government of Nairobi in the greening of our city. And we have agreed with the governor that beginning January, we are going to hire 11,000 young people to create the army that will green our city, those that were working under the old program of Kazi Mtaani. <clears throat> I want to ask other governors in other parts of Kenya to join us in this exercise of tree planting because it is an exercise of our moment to manage the effects of climate change. As you all are aware, we also appointed a working party to look into our education system. I want to say the preliminary report from the Presidential Working Part Party on Education Reform has been brought to the government and we have agreed that our junior secondary schools will now be domiciled in primary, in our primary schools to ensure that we save parents the huge costs that would go with taking their, their, their children to schools far away from their homes. And I have also instructed the Teacher Service Commission to commence the hiring of the largest cohort of teachers in independent Kenya. We are going to hire 30,000 teachers by early next year to provide instruction in our schools. Let me also say a request from Kilifi County that the Pemba community living in Kilifi County that has for a long time suffered without identity, the government of Kenya is now going to work on the modalities to ensure that the Pemba community acquire citizenship of the Republic of Kenya. We are proud of Kenya's consistent record of leadership to advance the cause of peace, cohesion, security, and stability in our region. Under various regional and continental frameworks, and with the support of the international partners, we are deploying our position as a regional anger state for the benefit of our neighbors and our region. My predecessor, President Uhuru Kenyatta, working under the aegis of the Africa Union, is engaged in mediation efforts to restore peace and stability in Ethiopia's Tigray region and under the EAC initiative to restore normalcy in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Our interests, ladies and gentlemen, are nested in a dense network of reciprocal diplomacy which helps our agenda to attract investment 
forge partnerships and create markets for our exports and employment for our young people locally and, in, and overseas. In the last three months, we have aggressively sustained our pursuit of mutual beneficial endeavor with friends and partners all over the world. We have engaged productively with ESC member states, the governments of South Africa, United States, United Kingdom, Spain, Qatar, Germany, and South Korea to scale up bilateral ties and to explore avenues for collaboration in the multilateral space. We have forged agreements on mobilizing investments and financing in a wide variety of sectors, and we will continue to engage the international community as we implement our plan. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to innovate our way into the future. It is for this reason that was this Jammu Uri, we as a nation are staking our claim by rallying Kenyans to begin the work of designing a world much richer, much safer, and freer that we, than the one we have known. Innovation is frequently associated with technology, and we must avoid the pitfalls of viewing technology and innovation as a preoccupation with things at the expense of people. The most consequential breakthroughs in technological innovation have greatly enhanced human well-being. Among the Innovation Week's champions are the winners of 2022 Halt Prize, Echo Banner, from St. Paul's University, who employed the concept of green and circular economy to produce biodegradable sanitary pads from banana fiber. I have asked the Ministry of Education in recognition of their innovation to work with these young innovators on the delivery of our commitment to provide sanitary pads for schools in Kenya. The Kenya Innovation Week attracted large global technology firms whose senior leaders made their way to Kenya to witness firsthand the magnitude of the innovation potential of our Silicon Savannah. We have agreed on partnerships to support local organizations in providing opportunities for young people to acquire training and skills on various aspects of digital productivity. We are also exploring ways of making the benefits of monetization of online activity available to Kenyan content creators on more platforms. I have spoken directly to Meta, the parent company of Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram to monetize content for our digital entrepreneurs that will exponentially multiply their incomes and create employment opportunities for others. I am impressed and encouraged by the power of monetization and remote jobs. This is the way to the future. And I was asking myself, if I was not a state officer, I wonder what the content of my small Facebook page with 2.3 million followers would earn for me daily. As we have witnessed today from the performances that have given us thrilling entertainment, our creative sector is ready with thousands of highly talented and promising young people waiting to seize opportunities to stream high quality content for monetization. My administration in that context will work with all our tech community to ensure that we actualize the monetization that will ensure that these young people get royalties and money for what they are doing in the tech space. On sports, my administration recognizes sports and the arts as a major industry that can employ millions of our youth and help grow our economy. This is why we have moved with speed to get our football back, to protect Kenya's proud athlete pedigree from doping, and to streamline collection and distribution of royalties from our artists. Through the revolutionary Talanta Hela plan, we will rebuild and monetize our sports and creative industry. As part of this plan, 
I will champion a grassroots football development program that will see national government work with county governments to invest heavily in youth football. Arrangements are at the first stage to launch a bottom-up football tournament to be contested by under-19 teams from all 47 counties. We will work with our county governors for each county to build a team right from the ward level. This is the first step in our football vision 2030, where we will target our Arambe stars to play at the 2030 World Cup and Kenya to host the 2027 Africa Cup of Nations. Together, let us build Kenyan football from bottom, from the grassroots of our villages to the grand stage of the World Cup. I suggest to the ministry that the finals of these inter-county teams should be held on Jamuhuri Day every year so that we can celebrate the teams from across Kenya. We are ready to take our place as the digital workforce of the world. Our commitments under the digital superhighway component of our plan were intended for this purpose. To underscore our intent, we are today unveiling several cohorts of graduates whose training was supported under arrangements between the government of Kenya and the private sector. Safaricom retrained a number of university and TVET graduates to meet the digital industry needs of software engineering and data. Also, graduating today are the Presidential Digital Talent Program, a class of talented youth selected by the Information and Communication Authority for training through internship. Additionally, it is a big day for the beneficiaries of the Kenya Commercial Bank 2G Ajiri program. And finally, the Google Hustler Academy, who underwent an intensive and interactive training program, are ready to begin their journey in a world of work and opportunity that is now familiar territory. I now request all these graduates present today to rise. And let me say the following to them. Fortune rewards the bold. I congratulate the young people who followed their curiosity and passion to explore, to explore new ideas and possibilities and are now at the threshold of a new chapter in their lives and careers. I can, I can say that through this disruptive graduation, you have now been gra granted the power to create to connect, to innovate, and to inspire. I wish you success and God's blessings. Congratulations. You can now take your seats. Asante Nisana. We are also, we also congratulate 29-year-old Nelly Cheboy, the founder of TechLit Africa, who this morning was declared the CNN hero of the year for her work in creating computer labs for Kenyan children to access opportunities in the digital world. Congratulations, Nelly, for connecting and inspiring thousands of Kenyan children. As promised, everyone present in this stadium today will get a free scholarship on global entrepreneurship and innovation from the Thunderbird School of Global Management at Arizona State University. It is now time to keep that promise. There is a QR code near you. Mumeipata. Scan and access the scholarship now. A 16 unit course that would have costed you 100,000 is now accessible to you for free, courtesy of the innovation Jamuhuri. I also appreciate the firms and organizations which have stepped forward to support our vision to make Kenya the hotbed of innovation. We will continue to do our part 
and make such partnership bigger in future, and you are always welcome to be part of Kenya's journey to greatness. As part of this endeavor, CONSA has started the distribution of 23,000 virtual desktops to Tibets to enable students exploit remote job opportunities across Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, we are committed to support young people in re-establishing this country as the republic of ideas and the home of innovation. Through a dedicated startup fund, government will support the most innovative ideas each year to scale up into viable enterprises and commercial brands that will provide employment and drive our economic growth. The government of Kenya will work with our academia to establish the Kenya Open University within the next one year. I urge our scholars and intellectuals to play their part in democratizing education and open the way for, for anyone and everyone to quench their thirst of knowledge, education, and training. In line with the new focus of our national celebrations, Embu County will host the 2023 Madaraka Day celebrations under the theme Universal Healthcare. In conclusion, it is our time to make a contribution that will define Kenya for posterity as the envy of nations and the country that we, our children, and their children will be, will be proud to call home. We also have a task of preparing the nation for its future by equipping and empowering our youth to take charge as leaders in a brave new world through innovation. Let us therefore rally and join in our efforts in the timeless spirit of Harambe to exploit the opportunities at hand and hasten our progress into the future. Nasema asanteni sana kwa kunisikiza na watakia baraka ya mungu na muwe na Christmas in Jema Mungu awabariki sana. Asanteni and may the good Lord bless you. Thank you very much.